Hello, welcome to the string functions. So this module looks at functions. So functions are discrete bits of code which take some information in, makes a change to them, and then spits something out again. So here we are within a Python file here. Let's put a comment in here that says, so uh, comment that out with a hash, string functions. If I hit return here, I've got this little kind of error at the top here, which is just a kind of customization thing, which I'm going to pretty much ignore. Um, Okay, so previously when we created a integer variable and we combined this with a string, it didn't like it. So if I within the print here put a string, my lucky number is, and I'm going to concatenate that, combine it, glue it with the my number integer. Now the system's not going to like it. Now if I run this, I can run this as in an alternative way. So if I right click in here, you can see I've got a run option. It works exactly the same one on the left hand side. It's entirely up to you which you want to choose. But I click on that one, it says, right, type error. It must be str, not int. It must be a string and not an int. It must be some text. So it can't recognize that. So I need to be able to find a function that I can change that particular integer and put it out as a string. So the functions here, in fact, there's lots to be to be had except, well, want an argument, they want something to go in, and we can input this by putting it within brackets. So the str is my function, and then if I put the what I'm putting in there within the brackets, so the my number there, then it'll output that in effect as far as the system concerned with quotes around it. So it says my lucky number is seven, and it allows the system to recognize that integer now as a number. So very useful there, and you can see it's kind of turned a little kind of blue here to identify that as being a, a function, as is print. Print says, let's take all that information in and print that out down the bottom. So that's another kind of function that we've already been mucking about with. Let's have a look at some other functions. Um, actually, just look on, the, on this line. The system kind of can deal with this in an interesting way. If I put a, a sort of line break within that, it'll show those, if I've got quite a long string there, I can kind of put these on separate lines. The indentation there makes it easier for us to see. And we can see when I run that one, it looks exactly the same as the, uh, the one above it. Okay, let's have a look at finding how long, how many characters there are within the string. I know we did this in the last lesson, so it's a bit of a uh, review, but it was a uh, 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 but it was a function, so uh, let's let's do it again. So if I say print, and then if I say my quote, and let's just let's comment that out. It's going to highlight that, and then do control forward slash to comment it out. If I run that one, it should say hello world. So let's put another one in here. This time I'm going to say print, and if I say len, and then so within that argument, within the brackets, I'm going to put in the my quote if I could spell it. And this time it's going to tell me how many characters, which should be 11. Yep, 5 in hello, 5 in world, and 1 for space, so 5 plus 5 plus 1 should give me 11. Okay. Uh, I can muck about with the uh, um, the cases I see in things. So what I've got here, instead of by putting a, um, uh, a value into some quotes, I can also do a thing called an operation which is a sort of the same thing, but a slightly different way around. So if I put in a, into a string the quick brown, for, hang on, uh, I want to put this as a variable, <laughs> not a function. There's not a function called my string. So uh, let's remove the brackets around there. So I've got a the quick brown fox, and you notice it's kind of mostly lowercase, apart from the capital T within there. Now the operation allows me to change that value. So let's just see what we're going to look at without, well, before that's been changed. Let's say print my string and run that one. And it should say the quick brown fox. We see that. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to click on the print and I'm going to open up. I've got the my string. But the operation here is then followed by what's called a dot notation. And I then may need to take in an argument, which one doesn't. So I just do an open and close empty brackets. And this time it changes that to a different case, to capitals. So let's do the same here. It's copy and paste this using Control C and Control V. And I'm going to change this to being lower, and you'll see this now there says um, lower within there. Now what you can do in here um, is I can put these on kind of separate little bits. So I tend to split these out into discrete areas of code. So if I say my upper equals and then control V to put the my string to upper in there. And then within the print here, and I'm going to print of my upper and do the same here. I've got to create a variable called my lower, and with that I'm going to copy and paste in control c and control v the my string dot lower let's change the print here to being my lower 
So if I separate these out into different bits, let's just put a line between each of those. So I'm going to put the my string, make it upper, put that into my upper, and then print my upper. And then the same here, I'm going to take the my string, put it all to lowercase, put that into a variable called my lower, and then print those out. Now, the advantage about doing that is that well, it works in exactly the same way, um, but at least that when you come to look at the code in six months' time, you can see, understand, oops, put space in there, you can see which each bit of code is kind of what it's doing. You will see some programmers to try to put everything on one line as much as possible, but it makes it much harder to work out what's going on when you come to maintain your code in months to time. So up and lower, use for changing cases, and those sort of operations. So let's um, comment that out, and we'll look at finding things within strings. Oop, I've just deleted that. Let's just click on there and then go down. Hang on, my string hasn't been quoted out, so let's comment that one out. I'll just put a hash in front of it. There we go. Okay. So let's look at find something within a string. So let's create a string here. So um, let's use my quote and we'll put in, yeah, hello world, why not? So hello space world. Okay, and then I'm going to create another variable, which I'm going to say what I want to find within here. So if I put in here a, uh, a variable, which I'll call my find, and then within there, I can say, well, what I want to find. So let's put in a, let's say an O, because it's within the word hello and the world, so it should definitely, definitely find that. So if I print the my find in my quotes, this is a slightly different way of doing things. It's going to come up with basically a true or false, whether that's going to work. So it says true, it can find the my find in quote. So that's working sort of like a function, but it's sort of working within the print area. So if I change that to a Z, then it can't find it, so that comes up with a with a false. I don't have to put that within variables. It can I can do it um, just within the uh, the text as well. So like we did before with the case change here, if I say print and then or within the um, concatenation, if he is he he within my quote? Yep, uh, it is, because I've got the he as part of that one. It is case sensitive in here, so uh, if I put a with x in there to get a false, but let's get a surprising false within here. Let's, if I just change that to being, well, it's a, well I could put that in a, in a variable to do it or, or not. Let's just do this in a, I want you to do this in a, in a separate way of doing it. So. I can create a thing called a find, which isn't going to give me a true or false. It's going to give me where it's going to find things in the variable. So um, I'm going to stick with the my quote and the my find, and I'm going to say print here. But um, if I say my quote dot find, and I can within there, I can put in an argument. So I'm going to put in the my find. Now let's just comment out the other two prints because I don't want them to be getting in the way. So control and forward slash. So is it going to find a Z within there? Well, no, it isn't. So it's going to come up with a word false. Actually, not the word false. It's going to come up with a number. And that is a minus one. And in programming speak, minus one is almost the same as having like a, a kind of false within there. So let's change that to something that we can find. So a, uh, a D. And this time it says, yes, I can find it. It's character number 10. Now, you may say, hang on, there's 11 in there, and D's at the end. Let's change that to a capital H in this one, and that should find it. So it starts at the zero position. It won't find a lowercase w, so it still comes up with an error for that one. And the reason for that is that it's case sensitive, so it's only looking for an exact match. So it finds the capital one in position six. So it does allow me to search for different things, and I can... Um, I almost can say, well, okay, if I if I can't find it, then I can look for something being a minus one. I can do a uh, a condition on that, which we'll look at a bit later on, to see whether it's going to find it or not. I hope I'm not typing this too quickly. Uh, if I am, just pause the video and then you can type things out. Okay, so let's look at doing a replacement. So let's use the my quote again, and equals, and within there, let's put in the hello world. And what I'm going to do is let's just um, let's print the first of all before I do that one. So if I say print my quote, that's going to give us hello world. But I'm also going to say, well, actually within this, I can make a change to it. 
So I'm going to say, let's put into my quote what's currently in my quote, but I want to replace that with a, well, I, mean, I only need to put two arguments in here. What I want to replace, so let's say the word world, and then I want to put the second argument in, which is going to separate with a comma, and I'll replace it with the word earth. So take my quote, replace them over, and fill my quote with that new value. And the system was quite happy dealing with that one, so I say print my quote, and it changes the hello world to hello earth. Okay, the last one we're going to have a look at is going to find out whether something is a an alpha or a number. Um, it's still working within strings, so it's still looking at things within quotes. Uh, but it's what is within that quotes? Are they um, letters or are they numbers? So let's just go and copy Control C and then Control V to copy and paste those in. Okay, if I say print um, my quote dot, is that alphanumeric? Now, you'll think that it probably is, but it's going to come up with a false. So um, when I run that one through, and the reason for the false here is that I've got a space between the hello and the worlds, which it doesn't recognise as being a character. So if I remove that space and then run it, it gives me a true. So you need to be maybe kind of aware of the fact that uh, spaces aren't viewed as alphas and how it's going to deal with maybe a large number of characters for looking at, at, at alphas. Okay, let's have a look at the, the same, but this time for um, digits here. So I'm going to, if I highlight that, do Control C, then Control V on the keyboard. And let's change that from being some obvious text to being some digits. Now, if I run this one, of course, this is going to give me a false, because those ones aren't uh, alphas. And then if I change that to his digit, and then it should find that. So it gives me a tree for both of those. Okay, there are loads more functions than this, but they tend to be in each of those those forms you saw at the beginning or with the dot notation. So have a bit of a play around them, see what you can find. And um, that's it. Thank you for listening.